So in this video, I played and platinumed one game that launched on each major PlayStation console. But in this video, I'm gonna do it again. I know a lot of people can have nostalgia for this game, but I've never played a single Ape Escape game. So what you're about to see is going to be my first time playing one of these games. Oh, these controls are so odd. Every time you come back to a PlayStation 1 game, it's just strange. I'm pressing triangle, is that not cheat? What is triangle? Oh, it's to swap weapons. Oh, I thought it was to eat. Got it. Let me try and whack this guy with my lightsaber. What is that, a biscuit? Did this game? Did this guy just shoot me? What is this game? Bro, come yeah. Boom! Rookie catcher, let's go. So the basic premise for this game is to catch monkeys. So because this game is based around catching a lot of monkeys, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to guess that there will be trophies tied towards catching a certain amount of them. So there's three trophies tied towards catching a certain amount of monkeys. For the first trophy, you have to catch one monkey. For the second trophy, you have to catch 50 monkeys and the third trophy you have to catch 100 monkeys so other than the monkey trophies the majority of the trophies are tied towards collecting gadgets so when you collect a gadget you have to do a little tutorial mission just so you can understand the basic mechanic around that gadget and once you complete that mission you will receive your trophy oh shit, we can swim let's go next gen baby to come out again yeah. yeah get wet Right. So the reason why I like doing these kind of videos is because there's an absolute boatload of games to play and some of these games are extremely easy. For instance, Ape Escape is only going to take 8 hours, it's a 2 out of 10 difficulty and it only requires one playthrough. Come here, you monkey. Got you. Oh, uh, this is some dinosaur shooting me. What is this? A plant dinosaur? So throughout your playthrough, you will come across these coins. These are called Spectre Coins. Now there's three trophies tied towards them. First one, you have to collect your first Spectre Coin. The second one is to collect 20. And the third one is to collect 40. There's actually a total of 60 in the game, but you don't need to collect all of them, thankfully. However, these coins are pretty important because by the time you actually obtain 40 of them, you'll be able to access the three mini games. So these are the last three trophies. Um... Which are tied to these mini games, I guess. So, I guess I have to just play them. Oh, never mind. I guess I just have to launch it, I suppose. So, I think I could just back out, right? I, I need to just launch these and then get a trophy. It's not that difficult. Let, let's, let's take a look. Let's just first see what this looks like. Oh, I'm playing. Oh, shit. I thought that was the loading screen. This is. Goofy. What is happening? I'm fighting with my analog six, by the way. Oh no, I'm getting okay. Yeah, I'm getting absolutely smacked. So, okay, that's <laughs> that's interesting. Kind of cool, also that they you don't get stuff like that in games. But anyway, here we go. So I should tap this button, and then we get the platinum. And then once we get the platinum, we can move on to that next generation game. Oh, I must jump. Space monkey and wait for it. No ape can escape. Let's move on to PlayStation 2. So I platinum Jack and Daxter, Jack 2, so I might as well finish off the trilogy by going for Jack 3. So Jack 3's difficulty is a 4 out of 10, will take you around 20 hours and it will require you to play at least one playthrough. Now as for the trophies themselves, most of the trophies are all tied towards the story. In fact, almost every single story mission has a trophy tied towards them, which means if I'm going to talk about every single story trophy for this game, I'm going to end up giving a full recap for this game, which I do not plan to do at least not for this video. However, other than the story trophies, they are your classic collectibles. Now, unlike Jack 2, Jack 3 does not feature any missable trophies, which means you can actually just finish the entire playthrough and then turn your attention to collecting all the collectibles. Oh, yeah. 
Life is good. So, speaking of this collectibles, there are two types of collectibles in the game. The first collectible is called Metalhead Skull Gems, and the second collectible is called Precursor Orbs. And both these collectibles have three trophies tied towards them. So first up is the Skull Gems. So you're going to need a total of 250 of these gems. So the way you go about to actually obtain these collectibles, you have to kill an enemy type called Metalheads. And upon killing one of these Metalheads, they will drop these Skull Gems. Now it's not too difficult because these enemy types are kind of easy to find. And it's not too difficult because before I reached the end of the game, I actually managed to have more than 250 Skull Gems. So up next is the Precursor Orbs and you need a total of 600. I'm going to be honest, I actually used the debug menu at first. Now hear me out. Now unlike the previous game where I actually used the debug menu to actually trigger the trophy, this time around I did use it at the start. But then I told myself, why am I trying to cheese this trophy because it's actually pretty easy to obtain this 600. So I ended up closing my game, restarting it so the debug menu could be switched off. And I actually started to farm this pretty legit. Now in order to collect 600, it's actually pretty easy and I don't know why I actually decided to do the debug menu because the debug menu actually takes a lot more effort and more time and it's more draining but in order to get the 600 you have to find these precursor orbs some of them are just out there in the wild some of them are even in pottery that you actually have to destroy and then you can also complete these challenges now in these challenges you either have to find a gold precursor orb and the gold precursor orb counts as three orbs there's also different types of challenges not only to find these gold ones like time attacks or racing through checkpoints stuff like that it's very creative and it's way more fun than to do it through the boosting mode and obviously the reason why i'm saying this is because by the time i actually completed everything you will realize i actually have more than 600 but i'm actually glad i didn't do the debug route because it's actually way more satisfying and more fun to do it legit oof i just knocked that guy oh knocking a bunch of people oh i missed that one oof, got me real close oh wood go baby go my wood when does this end I don't know why I turned. I must keep straight to them. Oh. Boom, there we go. Oh. And there it is, the final trophy. I'm, I'm actually glad I didn't do. I'm glad I collected these properly. And wait for it. There it is. Oh man, let's move on to PlayStation 3. Beyond the Souls is a game that I've been meaning to platinum for the longest time now. So Beyond the Souls is made by Quantic Dream, the same developers who made Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human. And Beyond the Souls kind of launched right in the middle of those two games. Speaking of Beyond the Souls, this will be a 3 out of 10 difficulty, it will require you one playthrough and it will take you around 20 hours. So even though the guide states it will take you one playthrough, I don't necessarily think that is the case because I do believe this game will take you at least two or three playthroughs depending on how lucky you are and the choices you made on your first playthrough. But you will see why I believe this game will take you at least two playthroughs in just a second. So in Beyond Two Souls, you play as a girl named Jody, and she was born with a strange gift slash curse where a ghost basically follows her around. However, this is not supposed to be a horror game because this ghost doesn't scare you. In fact, you do the scaring because this entity is actually a playable character. Now this entity's name is called Aiden. Now because this game has two protagonists, that means you can play this game in a two player mode called a duo mode. So yes, you guessed it, you have to play the game in duo mode in order to get at least two trophies. And those two trophies are starting at least one mission in duo mode. And the second trophy is to play the entire game in duo mode. So playing duo mode as a solo player is not the hardest thing in the world because only one character is playable at once. Meaning you don't have to hold two controllers or try to control two characters in one scene because that will never ever happen throughout this game instead of you'll be switching the two characters throughout the game at certain points so beyond the souls is a game about choice where your choices actually matters now on my first playthrough i decided to not focus on trophies so in that way the trophies will not influence my decision making as i make my way through the story so all the trophies i triggered on my first playthrough was real genuine 
and instinctive based on the choices I've made throughout my playthrough. Also, for whatever reason, this game was shot in a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which means you'll have these black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. I don't know why they actually did this. I guess maybe to make the game seem more cinematic. At first, it did feel a bit distracting, but over time, I just got used to it. So at the end of my first playthrough, this is what my trophy list looks like. And the reason why I'm showing is because you guys can actually see the choices I've actually made on my first playthrough. Because as I said, on my first playthrough, I didn't look at any trophies, which means all these trophies I triggered came from genuine decision making and choices throughout my first playthrough. So now that my first playthrough is now done, it's now time to go into chapter select and start cleaning up that trophy list. So while I was farming some of these trophies, I actually had to end up farming a bunch of the same missions multiple times in order to get different outcomes for those missions. For instance, during the mission called The Party, where Jodie is attending a party with teenagers her age. Unfortunately, during this chapter, Jodie does end up getting bullied. However, there is two outcomes. One for taking revenge, you will get a trophy for seeing that outcome. And the second one is to just leave the party after getting bullied. That's another outcome resulting in another trophy. Now on my first playthrough, I chose revenge because how can you not take revenge on bullies? It's the most satisfying thing in the world. Which means I have to replay the mission again and choose to leave the party once Jody gets bullied. How do you not choose the, the revenge option? It's like you just want to go in there and just like tear up the place. But unfortunately you're just going to leave. Unfortunately for this trophy. Oh man. We, we gotta leave. Revenge is like it's it's the It's very really satisfying, I have to say, but for the trophy we gotta leave. <laughs> damn, that's so unsatisfying. Damn. Cold blood, damn. So unsatisfying. I I prefer getting the revenge, you know? So during the mission called Like Other Girls, I end up messing up this mission during my first playthrough. Because in this mission, Jody just wants to go out, but she's not allowed to. Now, unfortunately, during my playthrough, I end up getting caught while trying to sneak out. And I couldn't end up getting this trophy. However, I have to replay this mission again because obviously I messed up on my first playthrough. But once you successfully sneak out, Jody will end up at a bar. And once Jody's at the bar, she will unfortunately be attacked and harassed by these old men. And I didn't need to protect her in order to get a trophy called Together Forever. Is that David from Detroit Become Human? Not David, is it David? The... No, it's Todd. Not David, Todd. From this Detroit Become Human. Either in Detroit and uh, Beyond the Souls in one universe. The fourth game is going to be like an Avengers style game. We have Marcus and the guy from Heaven and all them. And she's going to appear up in the fourth game. But that straight up looks like Todd. Uh, slap face. Get off Todd. Okay, there we go. Jesus! Okay. Can I aid an update? Can I go Super Saiyan? There we go. Okay. Uh, I don't see any options. There, 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 there. Man, and the bartender's involved? What? Like a. Smacking with the table. They're very casual with a table smacking their face from the near. Oh, I told me not to do that. Okay. Well, anything else? Oh, we can knock them out now. Wait, must I kill them? Well, GG. Cheers. Oh, GG. I'm not sure if this is gonna count towards the trophy. If I have to kill them or just scare them. Together further. Nice. Now there's going to be a bunch of missions very similar to this, like for example the mission called The Dinner, where you actually have to play it at least two times, probably three times in fact, including your first playthrough. But the other two times where you have to play through it, you have to get a trophy called Perfect Lover, where you have to cook a meal, clean the apartment, took a shower, and wore the elegant dress, and put on some music. And then you have to replay the mission again, and this time around you have to order pizza, and then watch some TV, and wore some casual clothing. So now that the smaller, individual, less time-consuming trophies are now completed, it is now time for the most time-consuming trophy, and that is to see all the endings. Fuck. So now this is gonna get pretty complex to explain, so bear with me. So the first thing what you wanna try and do is make sure that all the characters that can potentially die in this game, you have to make sure they all survive and are alive at the end of the game. 
and once you have done that you're in the mission called the black sun which is the final mission in the game where the government tried to make a device that bridges the gap between life and death and basically try to make sure the worlds are in one now during this mission jody has to try and shut down this machine and once you are pretty much inside this portal device you get a big opportunity to choose to go into the beyond aka dying or continue to live now this is the first choice you must make sure you live once you have done that the epilogue will start and then jody will be seen living in a cabin on her own and then after a long cutscene jody will try to make a decision and then she will have four decisions who to live her rest of her life with now the characters that you are able to choose who jody ends up being with are some of the characters you need to keep alive now all these choices at the end of the prologue are different outcomes which means you have to make sure everyone's alive you need to choose to live alone then you have to replay the epilogue again and choose to live with zoe then once you've seen that outcome you have to replay the epilogue again then you have to choose to live with ryan then once you've seen that ending you have to replay the epilogue yet again and then you have to choose to live with Jay. Once you've seen all those endings, now you have to replay the final mission, the Black Sun. And once you get inside this portal device yet again and you have to choose between going into the beyond aka dying or choosing life. So this time around you have to make sure you choose to go into the beyond and that will be a different outcome. So if you recall earlier I did say this game will take you at least two playthroughs. This is where the second playthrough sort of comes in because now you're gonna have to replay the entire game from the chapter called Homeless. Now it's not the entire game but Homeless is about halfway through and the reason why you want to do that is because this time around all the characters that can potentially die you have to make sure they actually die and that will be a different set of outcomes. And then once you make your way to the Black Sun which is the final mission you'll end up in this portal area and you have to choose between going into the beyond aka a dying or to continue to live for this outcome you have to make sure you choose to live but this time around the difference between the first time you've done this this time everyone is dead now you have to replay the end mission again not the epilogue the entire final chapter and this time around you have to choose to go into the beyond now you will actually get a separate trophy for this and that trophy is to make sure everyone is dead and then dying at the end you'll get a separate trophy called a better world once you've seen all those endings, it's time to yet again play the final mission called The Black Sun. But this time around, it doesn't matter if everyone is alive or dead, it really doesn't matter. But for this outcome, just before you make your way into the portal, where you get to choose to go into the beyond or to continue living before you actually get there jody will be attacked by these weird demon stored up things and you have to do a bunch of button pressing quick time events stuff like that now you actually have to fail the quick time events on purpose and that way jody will actually end up dying before she can actually switch off this device resulting in another ending and once you have done all that the trophy is yours so now that I've seen all the endings of this game, it's now time for another time consuming trophy. And that trophy is called Uncontrollable, where I have to take every opportunity to play as Evil Aiden. Now unfortunately for this trophy, you cannot just go into chapter select and just play individual chapters. You have to play the mission from the experiment, which is like the first mission. And you have to play through until you get to the mission called The Dinner, which is about halfway through the game. They say video games causes violence, but man, on my first playthrough, I made sure I chose the best choices <laughs> so I don't hurt my virtual character's feelings. Uncontrollable. Now while I was busy going for that trophy, I was also trying to get this trophy called Explorer where I have to find all the bonuses. This is basically your classic generic collectibles I guess and there's at least one or two of these collectibles in each chapter and I was busy getting these as I was essentially replaying the game again and that was the final thing I had to do. Okay, this is the last mission where one of the bonuses that I missed should be up here. There it is, nice. Finally, this game took a lot longer than I thought. And, come on. There we go, boom, done. No trophy? Oh, don't tell me I have to finish this mission. This is such a long mission, man. There we go, the mission should be finished. There it is, it's finished. And I platinumed all the Quantic Dream games. I know there was that game called Fahrenheit, which is, which is the PlayStation 2 game, but it doesn't matter, maybe I'll play that at some point. But there's my latest platinum, and we can finally move on to PlayStation 4.
So as someone who is a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus and as someone who has platinumed the Shadow of the Colossus remake, I always wanted to play and platinum and check out this game, but I've never got around to do so. And I think now is the perfect time to check it out. One of the coolest things about Shadow of the Colossus is its massive scale, climbing these giant monsters and taking them down. Now in this game, you're not going to go around killing a bunch of monsters, however, the scale to this game is there. So in this game, you play as a boy and he basically woke up in this cave and his main objective is to just to get back to his village. And out of all things, his companion is this giant man-eating beast named Trico. So The Last Guardian is going to be the most difficult game for this video and this game is a 6 out of 10 difficulty, it will require you 3 playthroughs and finally it will take you around 25 hours. Whoa, that's a big boy. That's a big boy. A big boy. Alright. Okay, guess you seem rather hostile. Um, okay, let me take out the spear. Then I think we'll be best friends after that. We'll just try to climb up on you. There we go. Okay. We'll be spear. Don't worry. We'll be best friends in just a second. There we go. There we go. See? Relax. Oh, jeez. I just got one tapped. KO'd. Now, because this game is going to require me to play at least a minimum of three playthroughs, during my first playthrough, I decided to not focus on a single trophy because first of all, there's a lot of missable trophies and second of all, I can always clean them up on my second and third playthrough. However, I did actually focus on two trophies but those trophies will only be triggered at the end of the game and that's to finish the game in 30 hours or less and the second trophy is to complete the game in less than 15 hours. Oh, there he is. He's still around. And there's a small one. Baby Trico. That's cool. Yeah, the camera is just the worst thing in this game. Other than that, it's a great game. There it is. Very similar to a Shadow of the Colossus with the camera. Camera is probably like the worst thing about the game. And there it is. That's for finishing the game in less than 15 hours, which is huge. However, just before I managed to get to the end, I did manage to trigger a miscellaneous trophy called The Call of Nature, where I have to catch Trico in the act. Now, this is a pretty RNG trophy because there's no scripted moment when this actually can happen. This can happen anytime during your playthrough and luckily for me, I actually managed to see Trico doing this. This could have been his second or third time but luckily for me, I actually managed to see it and because I saw it, I caught the trophy. The Call of Nature. Did, Did you just take a shit? So now that my first playthrough is completed, it is time to move on to my second playthrough. So now during my second playthrough, this is where I'm going to start cleaning up most of the trophy list. So the first thing I have to focus on is getting those collectibles. There's three types of collectibles in this game. The first thing is these barrels. Now these barrels are your classic collectibles. These are all over the game, hidden in certain places, hidden in plain sight sometimes. And some of them are required to progress the story. Now this trophy, you mustn't just find them. You must make sure Trico eats them in order for them to count. Now don't forget about these barrels because we're going to come back to them for a few other trophies. Now as for the other collectibles, the second one is called Collar. We have to make sure Trico puts his head in each hole. Now throughout the game, you will come across different archways, tunnels, stuff like that. Now this trophy is actually pretty easy because you just have to stand on the other side of the archway, call for Trico, and Trico will try to squeeze himself through it. Now for these other collectibles, you have to listen to every single hint. And this is a pretty annoying trophy. So throughout the game, you'll have this old guy narrating the game, basically telling you the story of this game. And throughout the game, you'll narrate a thing to help the player progress. For instance, if you're stuck on a puzzle, he will say, oh, I then proceeded to into the next room. Basically kind of hints to the player, oh, I need to go check in that room. That Now that's what you need to do for this trophy. Because this is my second playthrough, I kind of had an idea on how to solve most of the puzzles and to proceed throughout the game. You just have to sit there and wait until the narrator speaks and tell you what to do. So sometimes you're going to end up sitting five to 10 minutes even 15 minutes just to wait until this narrator speaks and give you the hint
Gata Chatu, yet no sa o tui. Atunizi, yeho, onia kia, inetu, on tricone, a wizi. So remember those battles? Now we need to get a few more trophies involving them. So the first one, I have to balance a battle on top of another battle and walk at least 10 meters in order to get a trophy. Okay, got my two battles. Just have to place this one on there. Just line it up nicely. Oh my god, this boy. Oh my. Great. Okay, this is, a, I think, a better spot. Oh my god, can you not walk onto it? Back up. Slowly back up, there we go. Oh my word. This boy is like so sensitive. Just line it up. There we go, place it down. Boom. Okay. That's good. I just need to slowly pick it up. Oh my god, this boy is incredibly wild. No! Oh my. Okay. Slowly approach this barrel. Can I just put it on? Okay, there we go. Okay. Pick it up slowly. Oh, oh my god. This guy cannot just pick up anything slowly. I just have to walk. But this boy is like flinching all the time. He's like, he's doing that. I'm not doing anything. I'm not even walking this time. Okay. I just gotta keep moving, I guess. Just keep moving. This is kind of stressful, not gonna lie. Nah, I, d I don't know if I want to go down these stairs. Oh man, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and turn around. I'm gonna walk backwards. I'm gonna just, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna take the stairs, too risky. Okay, let's just, just walk that way. Slowly, you know what, small steps, small steps. Oh, there we go, balancing battles. Huge. <laughs> For the second trophy, I have to throw 20 battles against suits of armors. It's a pretty easy one, kind of tedious. However, these suits of armors have a lot of trophies tied towards them. For instance, you have to defeat 10 or more suits of armors by removing their heads. Then there's another one where I have to defeat 20 or more suits of armors with three ghost lightning. And then another trophy where I have to cling onto a suit of armors back for at least 30 seconds. So now that I have all the miscellaneous trophies out of the way, it is now time for that third playthrough. And this third playthrough is going to be the reason why this game has a 6 out of 10 difficulty. So the first trophy is a speedrunning trophy and I have to complete the game in less than 5 hours. If that wasn't difficult enough, I also have to try to beat the game without dying. So this is actually a pretty easy one, it's actually a lot easier than you actually think because on my first playthrough, Blind Run, I actually only died at least 2 or 3 times, by accident in fact. But what makes this a little bit more challenging is that I have to pretty much rush through the game in less than 5 hours. While trying to do that, I must make sure I make no mistake and not fall off any edge. And to make things even worse, I have to get this other trophy called intensive care and for this one i have to remove all the spears of trico as fast as possible so throughout the game you will have different fighting encounters and some of the enemies will start throwing spears at trico you need to remove these spears as fast as possible before you move on to the next sequence and sometimes the spear can be under trico's wing and it can snap in half making it pretty hard to find and if you discover only later on this one spear hidden under trico's wing you pretty much have to restart the entire game so in short i have to beat the game in less than five hours without dying and remove all the spears as fast as possible which means i'm probably gonna have to take at least two or three minutes after each encounter to make sure there's no spear attached to trico so the speed run was actually going pretty well until i got to the end this part is a uh, probably the worst part in the game so i just have to do that so essentially we're trying to open up this portal Oh, not portal. I don't know why I'm saying portal. I, I have to open up that. It's a lift, basically, but that, it's all closed. So I have to activate all these switches, I guess. And then these robots will come alive for armor or whatever. Some of them need a helmet, for instance. And then they'll wake up, but now they will start chasing me. This one has a helmet, so it'll just activate. Oh, shit. This one also has a helmet. Shit, I have three of them chasing me already. That is not ideal. I think I just made it a lot harder than it needs to be. 
Oh my word! Is there anyone, any, any thing that wasn't been activated yet? Here we go. Here we go. Here's one. Huge. I need a helmet now. I think there's still one without the helmet. Oh my god! Just ignore my. Just ignore that. I'll try to throw that. Oh my word! There's so much. <gasps> I can't mess up now. Oh, I must throw this thing backward. Back this way. Oh my word. This is so annoying. This is so annoying, man. Uh, this boy, like, falls away. Even a little thing, man. Like, he trips while he's on the floor. Look at this. As I get up, he's gonna trip. Boop. He trips. Like, how are you always tripping? Oh no, I can't. I can't mess up now. Please. I think this counts as dying, right? You're kidding me. Come on, man. This is taking a lot longer than I thought, man. I'm wasting so much time. This game is relying on so much animations that it's clashing with each other. Just pick up this thing and activate that robot, please. Oh my god, this is not fun. I'm not having fun, this is annoying. I can't even see what's happening. Where's, where's the helmet? Oh my god, it's over here. Just pick up the damn helmet. Oh my god. I'm wasting so much time. Okay, okay just get up. Please, can you get up any slower? Is that a thing you can do? Wow. This is... I'm gonna spend like five hours in this room. Please pick it up. It's right there. Let it let go, you... Jeez, I need to activate. I'm just I'm I'm Oh my word, he didn't have his the thing equipped, man. If I don't get the five hours, uh I'm gonna blame it on this room. This whole playthrough was completely fine. A lot of people had trouble with Trico and his animations or, or his uh, AI. But I think Trico was completely fine for me. This room was terrible. Now I just need to get out of here. Okay, I can't mess up this jump. Okay. She Okay, get me out of this room, please. I honestly feel like I, I didn't make the five hours, to be honest. It feels like... Can you not do that? Everything is bind to, like, circle in this game. Oh, my word. Can you just push the thing? Oh, my God. Grab the tail, please, and drop it down. Drop it down. Kick it over, please. Oh, my God. There we go, okay. It's like stuff like that is, is wasting so much time, man. I I don't think I have those five hours. I'm gonna be very surprised if I do. Because now I'm gonna wait 15 minutes because now this boy is gonna start limping. Great. Oh, man. I can't do anything. You have to wait until he recovers. Oh, man. Worst thing is, it's like there's no timer. You have to kind of keep track of your time, man. I did start five hours ago, so I don't know. But we'll see now. I should get at least one trophy because I didn't die. Skip that. So I should get the one trophy. If I only get one trophy now at the end, then that should be the, the don't die one because I didn't die. Okay, we can skip this. And then if the other two doesn't trigger now when the, the first one triggers, then... I have to replay the game again because I'm, I'm very I'm not sure about the spear one as well. I have a strong feeling I have to play this game again. I was just so much time in that one room. Unnecessary time. Oh, uh, the end. Oh, there we go. That that that's the one. That's the speed running one. Five hours. Intensive case. That's the spear one. And I and I obviously uh, didn't die, so that should be the the other one. Yes, untouchable. And that's the platinum. Let's go. Oh my. Did it in three runs. Let's go. Huge. The last guardian. That was the worst. But now we can finally move on to PlayStation 5. So when choosing what PS5 game I wanted to feature for this video, I had to make sure that the game that I've chosen 
does not have a PlayStation 4 version because I wanted to make sure this is a pure quote unquote next generation game, PS5 game. And the game I've chosen is The Medium. Now I know there's many games that, that's only on PS5, but those games are probably already platinumed or will probably be featured in future videos. Now because this video is going on a lot longer than I thought, The Medium is going to be a pretty easy game. In fact, it's only a 3 out of 10 difficulty that will require one playthrough and will only take you 10 hours. Oh shit, I actually thought this was a third person game. Okay, I didn't think it was uh, like these fix. Yeah, I didn't think it was like this fixed camera perspective. It's fine. Shit. Reminds me of like old school Resident Evil games. Oh, look at that. It even has a inventory system like Resident Evil. I mean, it really doesn't matter to be honest. <laughs> inventory system's not exclusive to <laughs> Resident Evil, so it's fine to take inspiration. Look at that, there we go, my first trophy. So other than the sharp visuals from the environments, what makes this game really stand out as a next generation game is that you play as a woman who exists in two worlds. And this is basically the gimmick for this game. You get to play both realities at the same time. And this is a very impressive feature when it comes to the technology behind it because this kind of thing is not possible on older consoles. So while you're playing through the game, you'll end up at this abandoned hotel. This is where most of the game takes place and there's a lot of freaky supernatural things that happen at this hotel and you need to I guess investigate it because that's I guess a horror story cliche stuff. Now this is supposed to be a horror game but I don't recall a single time where I actually jumped out of my seat because I got scared. Yo I'm fading away. Am I supposed to see something? Oh jeez what the hell was that? So after playing for quite some time this game was definitely not clicking for me. I don't know what's like really happening with this game i'm not really paying attention it's i don't know this game is not <laughs> it's not pulling me in i don't know it feels um bland put it to you bluntly i don't know I just i was expecting more i like the uh the idea and the um the concept around this game the two reality sort of thing but i don't know just the game itself feels shallow i guess the hard work that goes in, i'm not a game developer but it, but still the games take years to make and then all of a sudden you just get one guy on youtube saying wow this game is trash Wah. but i don't know look if you like the game then you know all the power to you but for me this game is just it's just not clicking for me kind of sucks though but i'm still gonna push through i'm still gonna try and finish and platinum this game so once I finished my first playthrough, I had to play the game for the second time in order to get those collectibles. Now, this is probably the biggest downside for this game because this game does not have any chapter select. So that means you have to pre-play the entire game if you missed a single collectible. So now speaking of these collectibles, you actually have to collect all the collectibles in one playthrough. Which means if you missed one collectible at the very start of the game, you can't just boot up the game, collect a collectible and walk away with your trophy. In fact, you have to collect that collectible at the start of the game and then replay the entire game collecting every single collectible on the second playthrough. Which means I had to replay the game again because I definitely missed a few collectibles. And all I have to do is just simply collect the final collectibles because most of the other trophies were all tied towards the story. And all I have to do is just replay the game, follow a guide pretty closely because I missed most of the collectibles and just collect these final collectibles and get the trophies tied towards them. Now the plus side when going for your second playthrough, you can actually finish the game in less than 3 hours if you skip all the cutscenes and skip as much dialogue as possible. In fact, those are not my words, it's actually stated right on the PSN website. This is the final room and the final collectible is on this desk. Alright, there it is. And I should get my trophy? Hello? Did I? Is there another one? Did I miss one? Don't tell me I missed a collectible, man. And I have to replay this game again. Is there nothing here? Don't tell me I missed a collectible, man. Oh, I'm gonna be annoyed. I don't wanna play this game again just for a single collectible. I'm gonna have to play the whole game. So apparently, uh, according to the guy that I was watching, did not highlight this collectible. Um, so the collectibles on this, like, table over here. Okay, if she can stop talking, I can interact with it. Come on. There we go. There we go, there it is. Oh, it's stop talking. There we go. Oh, there's the trophy. Thank God, I don't have to replay the game again. 
and I should get the platinum completionist. Let's go. And there we go. I platinumed one game from every PlayStation generation.